Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, No Limits Mind Mapping. My name is Shelly Hayduck, and I'm co-hosting today's event with Matt Caton, our Director of Customer Solutions. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Today's session is all about creating a all-encompassing mind map that really becomes part of your digital identity. So we're going to cover a lot in terms of where we fit in, if the brain is actually a mind map, and how to create a limitless uh, digital place for all your thinking and information. So we're going to start off with talking about links, connections, but as well as data sources, um, because the brain and um, our ability to mind map isn't just for ideas, it's also for information. But before we get started, we're just going to do a little bit of background um, on uh, what mind mapping is and, and how the brain may or may not fit into that. And uh, we do want to let you know that we have two audio modes. Um, you can call in on our conference line or you can have us stream through your computer speakers, and uh, no need to do both. You will automatically be muted due to the volume. But that being said, we have a questions panel uh, on your GoToMeeting uh, module, so you can just hit questions. Feel free to type in any questions. Absolutely want your participation and feedback, and we're going to reserve a good 15 minutes or so for Q&A. Um, as well as Matt and I will be monitoring that throughout the session as well. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Matt, I just want to go ahead and confirm that you can uh, see the presentation that I have up so far. Yes, I can. Okay, great. Um, well, really, let's talk a little bit about where we are and why we have the need for uh, visualization technologies, mind maps. Um, and what we find is that current user interfaces are too linear for expressing uh, associative human thought. Um, you're basically drilling up and down a directory, and you might think, well, is this just li uh, limited to Windows or my Mac machine? But no, not really. It's kind of interesting because even it, our clouding solutions, Google Docs, um, Box.net, Dropbox, they all have that same uh, file folder hierarchy, which is fine for sharing a few simple documents, but if you want to show complex relationships or pr provide yourself or people you're sharing information with a more sophisticated view of kind of how everything fits together, um, you're really not going to do it by a gigantic, gigantic fi uh, filing uh, folder system in the cloud or on your desktop. Um, so that's where mind mapping comes in, and, you know, there's all types of mind maps. There's the traditional mind maps, and there's all kinds of new variants on what the, I guess, the standard Buzonian, Tony Buzan, who sort of uh, first popularized and wrote about mind maps. And so here we've got a mind map. Um, now, what you will all get with a mind map is a little bit more of a visual overview of what you're looking at. So the idea is to really map out each idea and its connection and, and do more of a lateral, lateralized view of everything. Um, the only problem with a traditional mind map is it is also hierarchical. So if you have a very large, complex topic, something at the end of one branch cannot really be easily connected to another branch because they're static. And therefore, you can run into some scalability issues, especially if you want to visualize your IT database or you have you know, a vast knowledge base on medical technology or medicine, or you just have a lot of stuff on your computer. Um, so that is where the brain comes in. And we're talking today about no limits mind mapping, going a little bit beyond uh, what some of you um, would consider a traditional mind map. And I, I think it's interesting, too. You don't necessarily, if you're on the call today and you're like, mind map, I don't even know what that is. I just downloaded the brain. It's cool. I just want to learn about it. That, that's fine, too. Don't worry about it. But there is a, a lot of people on the Internet as well that uh, come to the brain site because they are familiar with the traditional mind mapping paradigm. So we're kind of covering it for everyone. And, you know, we kind of want you to know how we fit into that genre, but how we sort of push the lines, if not uh, sort of explode them in another way. So with a traditional mind map, like what I showed you, it's primarily hierarchical. Um, with the brain, we allow for a hierarchical and associative way to connect your information, which leads you to have more of a nonlinear network. So we're actually thinking of the brain more in terms of an information network rather than a lateral categorization. 
organization. Um, also some differences in basically how you approach your brain and the topic of your brain. People ask how to get started, what's the best thing to map your brain out. With a traditional mind, conventional mind map, it's a single file architecture and usually you create a topic specific mind map, like I might mind map my vacation and that'd be a single map. With the brain, you could certainly just create a single brain on your vacation, but what's more than likely is that you would have a brain on travel and you'd have everything there from where you traveled 10 years ago to where you're going in the future and you'd have maybe a couple thousand thoughts. Um, and you could continue or the brain could even be the brain about you uh, starting with your name and travel could just be one section. So that's where um, really uh, conventional mind map, you're limited in number of items because you'll get into some usability issues. Whereas the brain, there, there is no limit. We are infinitely scalable. And with that, I'm going to jump out of uh, the PowerPoint. And I want to go, first of all, and give you some uh, inspirational examples in terms of uh, large brains. So I, if we're talking about no limits mind mapping, I would be uh, remiss to not talk about Jerry's brain and I'll just make this available. This is actually available online uh, in uh, actually, I'll just go to his homepage really quick to give him a call about that the Rexpedition and it's, and we can, uh, we'll tweet this link out, link out on, on webbrain.com. And he is actually on record right now for creating the largest single uh, most uh, created by a single individual. He has over 360,000 thoughts and over a million links. And this brain is really a testament to how you can kind of uh, really use the brain to express your personal, uh, your personality, your limits. Um, and just going back to the presentation really quick, uh, what I want to talk to you about is sort of your four phases of building a brain where you start with your uh, your key interests of life, and then you kind of move out. So these developments, uh, we start with what we call the efficiency area. And this is where you might just create a brain of stuff on your computer. Maybe it's just a map of all your IT resources. And then next phase is deep topic creation. Once you've created that basic hierarchical structure, you start networking and interconnecting. So as I show you Jerry's brain and a couple other brains, you'll see the um, associative connections. And then finally, you might, you'll be doing what Matt will be showing you a lot of is importing data, dragging and dropping files and folders and web pages. And that's what we call resource integration. And that's where your brain sort of evolves beyond just a mind map to becoming a knowledge base. And then the final phase of the no limits mind map is actually what we call mind meld and digital identity, which may or may not be appealing to everyone because you may uh, not need a digital identity or that might mean something different to you. But for a lot of users, the brain that they publish on Online or just you know even privately on their desktop becomes a reflection of their own thinking and, and hence their identity and that's where we are with Jerry's brain um, he actually uh, here it is gets into some really interesting things like if I, I've got some pins on the top which is what you want to do for a larger brain I'm going to click on my beliefs and wow you can see how how large this is this is basically his beliefs so he's got all kinds of interesting ideas uh, and, uh, you know, we can just click on one of them, for instance, is science keeps convincing up, it's all figured out. And that is under scientific reductionism, which is under the scientific method and reductionism. And see, I'm kind of clicking upward now, which takes us into a whole section on the scientific method. So every time I click on a thought in the brain, what it's doing is it's triggering all related pieces of information. So you're constantly presented with the most relevant information. Anything below my active thought, which is the thought in the center, is a child. So under the scientific method, method we have, um, you know, different hypotheses, the ideas of history. Um, it's science, but it's not necessarily right. How to think like a scientist. These are all sort of subcategories. And then above your active thought, you have parent thoughts. Now, if we think back to that snapshot of the file folder system, you know, if, if I don't know what folder Jerry would be able to store his thinking on scientific method on because he literally has it under, let's see, uh, three, six, uh, nine, ten categories here. 
these are the parent thoughts. So he has 10 parents. So unlike yourself or, um, you know, any living species, you don't get two parents in the brain. And in the polar system, it's usually one. You could have as many parents as you want. Scientific method has 10, which means I can get to this from many different routes and I can capture the way I think about this. So um, if I wanted to just come in, maybe I was looking at thinking about this from a historical perspective. Um, I could have came in through um, the age of enlightenment and got to this piece of information, the scientific method. Um, and then we also have jump thoughts. And these are thoughts to the left. And they're thoughts that are related, but not necessarily a subcategory. So over here, uh, we've got some interesting stuff that he has as a jump, which is also interesting. And again, you really get a sense of how Jerry's thinking here, uh, spirituality. So we can jump from the scientific mess method into spirituality. And now we're looking at sort of his uh, more spiritual uh, beliefs. And he has that under faith and, and personal growth and transcendence and all kinds of things. And also a category that a lot of people like in his brain, which is words I love. And, and it just goes on and on. And, and the other interesting thing about the brain is you can see that um, because it clicks and moves, um, you don't have to load everything at once. So I'm not seeing all 360,000 thoughts of Jerry's brain on the screen at once. Um, we do have other views if you want to see, you know, more expanded views, and, and we'll get into that as well. But what this offers is a way to continue to traverse associatively in a very large information network. Um, so that's an example of a, a more personal brain, and actually I'll end on his personal thought where he's got everything from his big issues to his fun and funny to his vehicles, even useful stuff and very personal messages. And, um, you know, he shared this online. Some people do this and certainly and a lot of people don't. And we'll, we'll tweet this link out and Matt can also put the link in the, in the Q&A. Uh, for you all if you want to navigate this. But as you're building your brain, as I imagine we have um, probably three different types of, of users, uh, possibly uh, quite a bit more on this call. Um, one of them is brand new users. You're probably thinking, whoa, this is overwhelming. But don't worry, it doesn't have to start this way. But secondly, we have users who started, but they're like, I'm looking for more ideas. I want to beef up my brain. So I totally recommend this brain as an example where, you know, it's a lot and you don't have to have, you know, 50 different child thoughts on every topic in your brain as he does. But it will give you some really cool ideas. Um, you know, you might, because you, you might have your brain, you thought, oh, I never thought about putting my beliefs in my brain or uh, words I love or just, you know, what I'm doing, you know, this weekend, my personal to-do list. So this is, this is going to maybe get your cre creative juice flowing. And that's what we want to do. And, and uh, do chat in any ideas or questions on, you know, if you're having issues on what to create to, to enlarge your brain. Uh, we'll try and cover that. Now, what I want to do uh, before we get into the nitty gritty as well is I want to go into another brain that is very impressive, created by another very interesting guy, Dr. Craig Baker um, over at USC. Um, he is a cardiothoracic surgeon, and I'm just going to go to the top of this brain. And this brain is actually a local version. And like Jerry, um, this is the interesting thing about some of our larger users. They're actually creating apps of our brain. There's an app of this on the iTunes store, but it's only available for medical students at USC uh, and, and the Joint Council of Cardiothoracic Surgery. And then Jerry's brain is available for everyone viewing for free online. He also sells a uh, iPhone version of it, which is amazing, for 99 cents on the App Store. So you can support Jerry by getting his brain on your iPhone. Um, which is which is really quite fun as well, um, but moving away from sort of the personal beliefs and, and you know everything under the sun, here's an example of more scientific information and how that's mapped and and the problem that this is solving is uh, basically the uh, surgeons and medical students had information all over the place from PDFs to online videos um, and it was very hard to put together a curriculum that um, represented all the information. So this brain is very large, uh, well over a thousand items as well, but it's a, it's a little bit more of a disciplined approach. So I wanted to show you this brain so you could see that, you know, you can have a large, broad uh, uh, depth of categorization structure at the top, or you can go a little bit more 
um, you know, simple, but still have, you know, a ton of stuff in here. So you can see they've just got the four primary thoughts here. Um, and then from there, you know, I can kind of click and I've got my core surgical foundation. And from there, I can go into core surgical skills. And that's pretty interesting. And they've got all kinds of stuff linked. So for instance, if I want to go into um, management and operation, I can again, I get the sense again, I can see that one topic is under many different areas. So this is general critical click care, and I can click on that. And here you can see the brain's really going to link to all kinds of information. So I've got links to textbooks, uh, online articles, uh, even if I launch, I, I can go even to journals here. So here's a link to a journal. And of course, I don't have access to that journal, um, an online textbook as well, and even YouTube videos. And you can actually, they are using our, the brain's tags and types. So you can actually go in and they've actually created different types for their information, which is really quite interesting as well. So if I actually want to go and just see, um, they've got, for instance, all videos. If I'm a video learner and I want to just get a, go to my YouTube types and maybe go to, you know, how to do some sort of uh, surgery, because there's a lot of information online, I can actually click on that thought and move to that area and launch that video. Um, and this, they have a, an app for it, and we won't have to actually go looking into how to do the surgery. But this is just an example of how you can move very quickly and efficiently through a large knowledge set uh, with the brain. And again, we've got the children below, uh, the parent above, and then I didn't get into this for the new users on the call, but to the right, we actually have the uh, siblings' thoughts that share the same parent. So that's another example of uh, no limits uh, brain. And then um, what we're going to do is move to a more typical brain example and how you would get started. And that's the my brain. And, you know, in a no limits brain, what you'd have, what a lot of people are doing typically is they're starting with their name um, and then creating sections for both business and personal. So here under my brain, I've got my business, and then what you want to do is start sort of mapping out all the key categories um, that you have, and then you can also have a personal section, and this can get very big and fun, and this is where you can really geek out with all your hobbies, anything from, you know, health and fitness all the way to, you know, the music you love, and there's a thought on, you know, pre latest preoccupations, so just, you know, whatever that is. Um, books you love, this kind of thing. Personal finance, this is a great area um, for those of you that are doing things for, you know, retirement savings or you want to track all your investments. Um, this brain, again, has it all. So your brain, in essence, could be one brain for everything. And that's what we're talking about today, sort of the one brain that rules them all. And we'll also cover how to import brains, or you can have the deep ginormous topic-oriented brain like the uh, Joint Council and Cardiothoracic Surgery. That's all about heart surgery. It's, it's actually very incredible. Now, one of the things in terms of a large brain that we're seeing is that you always want to have your pins. And what a pin is, is it's a, uh, just a, a link that sits on the top of your brain so you can get to an area fast. So if I was always going into travel and vacation, summer's coming up, I simply right-click on that thought and I can go ahead and just create a pin. So if I want to go ahead and do that, I can do that. And that is right here in the menu. So I select create pin. And now I've got that pin. And this sort of this area at the top is my digital dashboard. So wherever I am, um, you know, top of my mind, maybe I'm looking at my competitors, I can always go get to travel and vacation really quickly. Or this, I usually use this as my to do list, like opening a new office in Asia something we're working on. So here we go. I've got this whole area right here ready to go. Now I can easily remove a pen if I don't need to know what's going on with this particular person. I don't want to forget the thought, but I can just select to remove the pen. So this is kind of a nice strategy um, as you get things done or your workload changes, just select to remove the pen. And again, I'm not deleting or adding thoughts. That's, you know, we can certainly do that, but this is just focusing on pins and, and creating that space. Now, for a larger brain, in addition to your pins, you're, all, you're going to be using your Instant Activate a lot on your desktop or online. And this is, that's that search box here. So all I have to do is start typing in the first couple letters. So for instance, I'm just going to type in for fun, 
H W H A W Hawaii. Okay, you know, uh, and then I can just click on Hawaii, and I'm moved into my section on dive sites and dive locations. So um, it's really kind of nice to just be able to instantly activate an area. And by the same token, maybe my client, uh, let's see, uh, an educational client calls me, and I need to move really quickly to an educational area. I can click on that and move that, or my client Red Cross gives me a call. So I just start, start typing in red, and I've moved to that area as well. So you can actually switch views very quickly. And, and a large brain is very good for um, people who need to shift focus quickly because of the search, uh, the instant activate, as we call it. So as, as quickly as we're on Red, Red Cross, if I, I want to, I know Fred Baxter is the guy that, um, you know, has a lot of knowledge on client management. I just type in Fred and, you know, there he is. And I can just click on him and boom, I can see, you know, what he's up to. And I have notes on what he's doing and so on. And then you'll notice that we also have thought types. So each thought in the brain, um, in, in your mega brain, can have a typology. So here we've got um, uh, a director type. So if I want to see everyone who's a director, I can act in this brain, and I've kind of organized people by position. I can actually, again, go ahead and uh, go to my thought types area and select director. And here's everyone in this company that I've created a thought type for director. So I can go to Harold and see, you know, who he's managing and so on. And then uh, thought type is one specific attribute that covers the entire thought and gives it a color and an icon. And then we also have tags. And tags, you can have many, many, many tags. So I tag information in a large brain based on cost. So all my ideas that are low cost, um, you know, if I'm short on budget, I've ha I have a tag for that. And then I can sort of move to this area on my e-commerce launch and, you know, get to that. And I've got tags for stuff I'm going to do within six months, uh, two months. So you're really slicing and dicing information. Um, so with the thought relations, the parent-child jump, and then your uh, thought types and your tags, um, it really opens up a whole new level of analysis on your data set. Now, that's sort of the, the way, you know, these, these larger brains and sort of kind of the overview on, on their utility and, and how people are using them. Uh, what we want to do really quickly is show you how to get started on a brain. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new brain really quickly, and I'm going to call it my mega brain. So I'm going to call it my 2017. I'm going to use my keyboard over here. Uh, mega brain. And here we go. I'm just going to hit enter. And uh, a couple things. We can actually start this, um, you know, just with, with starting, you know, with nothing. And I wanted to show you this because it, it can go pretty quickly um, in terms of what you want to do. So first of all, what I like to do is create two categories. We want to do uh, business. Let me move my keyboard over here. And using the semicolon to indicate two separate thoughts, personal. So now I've got my, oopsie, let me just uh, retype this here. And I'm going to go ahead and, and forget these thoughts. So we'll go ahead and add business. And personal. And you can come in here and, you know, adjust your thoughts. And then from here, we can actually go ahead and add all kinds of other topics. So if I have uh, key departments that I want to add in my company, um, I can go in here and continue to sort of map this out. So if I want to do, for instance, uh, marketing, sales, customer service, I've added those. And now I'm sort of building a foundation. And uh, what I can do is I'm going to create another thought over here for team. Is I can start to make connections too. So if I have uh, Matt on my team, so let me just go ahead and add Matt. I can then connect Matt uh, to a different area 
Maybe Matt is part of my marketing team. So now what I can do is simply drag a link to make a connection. This is where you start and start typing in Matt. And there he is. And now I've linked Matt in my brain. And so that's what you can kind of see. And then marketing might be important to me. It might be using it a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and create a pin for marketing. So now you can see that I'm starting to kind of build the structure and the foundation. Um, and then beyond that, I can drag and drop information. So let's go over here to my desktop and I've got some folders on, uh, actually let's go to my projects. I've got some uh, marketing research that I can add in. So I've got marketing department, I've got you know all kinds of things. So let me go in here to customer data and I wanna go and add uh, information on uh, maybe in my personal section on how to start a restaurant. So let me go ahead and drag and drop this in the brain. And what that does is that creates a shortcut to uh, where that file lives. And I, I can actually keep that outside of my brain. I probably wanna move this into the brain because I wanna sunset this folder and synchronize this brain to the cloud. So I just selected that. So now it's stored internally. When I click on that thought, I can see that it's internal. And now I can sort of begin to develop a knowledge base. So uh, I'm actually gonna go up to options and search the web. And this is something that I, I you know, use a lot as the brain as a research tool. So now I can come in and start dragging third-party sources. So there's a nice article on, in, on, on, in Entrepreneur Magazine on how to start a restaurant. So I'm simply gonna drag from the browser address window and drop this on the icon in my brain. Drop it in my brain. There we go. And that creates a shortcut to where I wanna live. And I can continue, uh, where I want this article to live, and I can continue to do that. So let me do a few more. And this is in California. Now I've got my brain in auto hide. I'm actually just going to float the window so you can see this a little better here and it's a little closer for drag and drop purposes. So again, I simply drag and I can drop it right on the brain and it's going to go into the software and we'll add that article in the brain. So that's the way we continue to add. I can also do some importing. So I can actually go ahead and import all my IE favorites, or I can actually do specific folders as well. So if I wanna to go to the top of my brain and go to a particular file, and select import, I can actually come here to my projects and grab any type of uh, folder that I want. And let's just go ahead and do budget and hit save. And I'm gonna go ahead and import that particular folder in my brain. So in this case, I actually took my whole projects folder, which is sitting here on my desktop. And you can see it's quite extensive. I've got all kinds of things in there. And I've got that now imported in my brain. And each thought that or each folder in the brain becomes a thought with attachments. So key business drivers, I have three different um, attachments appearing there. And then I've got the, the corresponding folders. And then from there, I can start to really get associative in this brain and move things around. So I can drag individually documents or I can do folder imports um, or even make a folder connection. And you can see now this brain has grown really, really quite quickly here. And now I can start to make connections. So actually my real estate area, that's something under my restaurant section that's gonna be of interest because I need to figure out where we're gonna go do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually just start typing in first couple letters of, of that. And that is the real estate thought. And I can add this into my brain just by making those connections. So um, let me go back to uh, that area that we added a bunch of stuff in market research. And I also have a section on customer data. And for customer data, just 
going to go ahead and uh, grab that. If I want to add this into uh, customer service, again, I just start typing in the first couple letters and I select customer service and now I've made the connection. So now that area that was buried in market research on my desktop is now living in my customer service. So I've, I've started to populate my customer service with all my customer data really nicely. And of course I can come in here and uh, I can give it, you know, an icon, uh, what makes sense. Let me go ahead and actually choose a people icon. The brain is built, has built in icons as well. Uh, let's go ahead and, and add a, a flower here. So now you can see how this is coming together and I can continue to um, add thoughts here. So if I want more thoughts on um, maybe uh, customer service goals, I can come in and add that and so on and so forth. And then this area starts to really grow nicely. Um, I can also delete things as well or, or disconnect things and edit things. So if I actually don't want the e-solutions thought in this area on customer data, I can unlink that. So now I've just got this section on customer data under customer service, and that's kind of the way things grow. Um, now, one final note before I pass over to Matt to do even more editing is we actually have sort of the one brain for it all. And that is in your import section in your template brains. If I go to template brains, um, this brain, one brain for it all actually has both a business and personal section. So if you're feeling overwhelmed today, like, oh, I don't want to start creating all these thoughts from scratch, no worries whatsoever. Go into our, in, our templates and there's one for business. There's a brainstorm on education, IT management, and then we also have something that's interesting that if you start a basic structure like I've just done, but I want business tags and types, because I, I haven't started created, creating thought types and tags, and we'll probably cover that a little later on, uh, but they're very useful. I can just select this, which I'm going to do, and hit OK. And now what it's doing is actually importing a set of uh, thought types and tags that the brain's created for you that I'm just going to use. So you can see there's all 104 created and modified. So if I go to my tags area, I've got stuff now like a high cost thought tag or hot now project. And I've also got thought types. So if I want to, oh, I've even got a uh, thought type for real estate. So I can actually go back to that thought on real estate, I can actually use this thought type to come in here and thought type it. So I can go ahead and right click to thought type something just by going in now and to these built in thought types. So this is now going to be a real estate thought. And again, I've got all kinds of thoughts or if retail service is more of a market, I can tag that as a market. And so these are all just different markets we serve. I can actually click on the gate as well to go ahead and select all the thoughts. This way I can thought tag and type things. And if I actually wanted to start a new brain with um, all my content, I can actually just say, let me call this uh, mega brain two. Okay. And I'm going to select one brain for it all. This is actually going to do a full import of the one brain. So it'll just be a, a second or two here. And you can see my, so my mega brain two, the first name of that brain. And, you know, in general, when you're creating these brains, you probably want to start with your own name. I actually have a Shelly brain. Matt has a Matt Caton brain. And that usually becomes your title and your main thought, and you're creating thoughts beyond that. Um, but in this case, because I have brains with that name, we have the mega brain too. And what it's doing is it's just uploading uh, all the content uh, from the templates and putting it all into a pre-built packaged brain for me. So even though it might take a second or two, it's actually taking just a little bit longer because of the web connection, here we are. And so this is what the, the template brain looks like, sort of your one brain for everything, where you've got your work section and you've got all these thoughts on work, and then you've also got your personal section where you've got stuff. And you know, if you don't want a particular section, uh, you can actually come in and delete that section as well. Um, so if you want to hit hold control, click on the gate, 
that brings up a mass selection. So if I actually wanted to come in here and delete all these or move these, maybe this is a nice section that I want to feature. Um, you know, I can do that. So let me just come over here and I'll call this, um, create a new area called my faves, my favorite thoughts. And then I can come here and I've got these thoughts selected and I can right click and I'm just going to link them as children under my face. So then they're, they're linked here as well. So you can get into a lot of mass selecting. And likewise, if you don't like certain things in this brain, if you don't want a section on, uh, for instance, let's go back to business. Maybe you don't want this section at all on uh, marketing. I can just come in here and again, just control click on that gate. And then I can even control click on marketing and I'll move back to work. And what I'm gonna do is right click and I'm actually gonna forget that entire section. So now that's gone. So you can see when I go back to my work, um, that is gone. I don't have that. And I can also change thought names. So if I wanna call my work um, the business name, let's just say business, or whatever your business is, let's give it a, a real name. We'll say it's, uh, sorry, let's get, go back to this area here. Joe's Seafood. You can see that or we've got that now changed. And of course I can go ahead and, and change the, the icon as well. If I wanna go ahead and adjust the icon, I can do that. And that's really the, you know, the foundations for uh, going and kind of getting started and building a brain. And whether you start with a template or your own brain, you can see how it grows and expands. And sort of taking that to the next level, I'm gonna pass things over to you, Matt, um, so you can cover a little bit more on importing and, and how we differ from the conventional mind maps. Fantastic, great. I've got a couple of different examples to share with you today. So. Uh, first, I have my own personal brain open. So uh, this is my brain that I use on a daily basis. I keep track of all my, my friends, my family, my, my hobbies and interests. Um, and you can see, I just wanted to open up the report, share a couple of features with you. Um, I like to segment my brains out into topic-specific brains. So I've got work-related brains, project-related brains that I'm working on. Um, all my recreational information is kept in this particular brain. So I probably have uh, five or six brains that I jump in and out of on a daily basis. And all of them are anywhere between, you can see this one is 3,000 thoughts. I'm looking down in the reports now. So I have 3,000 thoughts, a little over in this particular brain. I've got another brain with 5,000 and another one with 10,000. So um, but those have a lot of proprietary pieces of information in them. So I can't open those, but I can open this and, and share this. These are just my own hobbies and interests. And when you continue to grow and evolve your brain, it's important to note that you can always go down to the reports. And if you're looking for a particular item in a very large brain, this is a question that we get from time to time, like, oh, as my brain continues to grow and evolve, will I start losing track of things of where things are? You never will for a couple of reasons. Number one, you built the brain. It's a reflection of your own organic uh, onboard brain. So I know exactly where my information, if I'm looking up information about my cars, I'm going to go into my land thought. Land is broken down into hobbies and interests. And I've got all my information about fixing up old cars and things like that in that area of my brain. I know right where to go. But also you've got a very powerful search that comes along with the brain. So I can just search on any word. Everything is being indexed from the thought names to the file attachments to web links. Every piece of uh, text that goes into your brain is indexed and is searchable. But also we've got these great reports. So you can see my reports is an alphabetical list of uh, well over 3000 thoughts in my brain. So I can scroll down and go to red wing fly rods, which falls under fly fishing, under fishing, recreation, et cetera. So a lot of different areas to go in your brain and easy ways to get there uh, in these very large brains using the reports. But I can also filter my reports. So I can say, all right, show me all thought types uh, that are of a particular type. So here's all my VW thought types. 
Um, or I can say all thoughts with an, an attachment that has a URL. And so these are all my thoughts in my brain that have a specific web attachment associated with them. So a lot of filtering, a lot that you can do with the reports and with your search in these very, very large brains that you create. And I'm gonna create a new brain from scratch just to show you how quickly, I know Shelly just used a template. I'm gonna use a different template. Specifically, someone asked about the business template. So let's go ahead and follow that lead. I'm gonna click on File, New Brain, and I'm gonna create a new business brain. I'm gonna use one of the brain templates. So this is the first example of the type of importing that you can do into a brain that you create. Even before the brain is started, I'm selecting from one of our pre-built templates, and I'll simply call this Matt Caton. So that's me, and this is my new business brain. Again, it's gonna take just a moment to upload all those, uh, that multitude of different thoughts and existing thought types and tags. Template brains are really great. If you're just getting started with the brain, it's a fantastic way to uh, sort of use uh, or create a sandbox to play around to get familiar with the te technology. Or as Shelly said, use this as the seed for your own starting brain. Delete what you don't need, add to areas where you do need them, or even change the, uh, um, uh, the different thought names. These are some very basic, I like to refer to them as, as sort of you know van a vanilla business. There's not much to it. It's just placeholders for your different um, uh, departments and projects and clients, et cetera. Um, it's up to you to go in and actually add your client names and your projects into, uh, into the brain. And so I'm going to do that now. So I've already created my business brain. I can start adding to it and I'm going to continue on using all of the different import capabilities in the brain to further uh, build this new mega brain of, of my business. So I'm going to be creating also a little side business called Matt's Furniture. So there's my tech business and then there's my passion projects, my side business. Now, instead of building this out thought by thought, I actually built this, constructed this brain earlier in another application. So I'm going to open up um, Laura Bloom Furniture mind map. So this is free mind. Some of you might be familiar with other mind mapping applications that are out there in the world today. Free mind and um, mind manager comes, uh, both come to mind. And both of those file types, free mind and mind manager, they can actually be imported into a brain. And the advantage to doing that is uh, there's, there are several. Number one, um, I always feel that the brain has better focus. There's no way here I am in free mind to zoom in on a specific topic. I'm really interested in this parts shortage that's going on now. Now, of course, I can add attachments to this, um, this node and, and map out additional relationships. But if part shortage, let's say the part shortage is uh, affecting the production of our dining room tables, I'm gonna control click on dining room tables. And now I right click and I insert a graphic link between the two. Now dining room tables, we've got a new order from an individual, the Yatsos. So I'm gonna click on the Yatsos, right click and insert a graphical link there as well. You can see I'm really gonna start creating a little bit of a, a spaghetti factory here. The part shortage is affecting many different areas um, uh, that I've mapped out here in my mind map. And let's say the part shortage is being handled by Pat. So I'm gonna connect that. He's gonna be taking care of that. So I'll insert graphical link and maybe I'll go back and change that link, make it red, whatever have you at, at a later date. So I can add additional information there. But all of these cross links, when you've got something on the far, far lower right-hand corner that's linked to something on the far upper left-hand corner, um, you start getting these lines across this, uh, this map. And you can see here, just with a couple of clicks, things are starting to get a little messy and they're gonna get a lot messier as I continue on evolving this mind map. So what to do? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and save these changes. I'll close that and I'll come into the brain. 
So under my furniture, I've got my furniture map. I created it in another application. I'll click on File and select to Import. And I'm going to import a an MM file. So I'll navigate into my C drive. And here are my different maps. And there is my Laura Bloom furniture. So it's going to take all of that content and import it here. If I had web links, if I had file attachments, if I had icons, they'll all show up here in my brain and be imported. The advantage, now you can see I can click down into, let's go into people and my customers, my individuals. Uh, there were the Yatsos. You can see the Yatsos are interested in dining room tables. Dining room tables, there's a part shortage. So anytime I'm researching dining room tables, I know all about this part shortage. And again, I can connect that part shortage over to Pat, who is going to be taking care of that, and add further information and even link this into other areas of my business brain. Maybe over in my business brain, um, I'm going to be working on some clients or some marketing. And for my marketing in my technical business, it's somehow going to be related back into maybe I'm going to use my furniture business as a marketing tool, how my furniture business benefits from this technical product that I'm building. So uh, for marketing, I'll link that over to my Laura Bloom Furniture. So you can see I'm starting to connect all of this existing information and existing relationships within my brain without the clutter, without all the, the cross-linking that uh, would take place in that mind map file, that, that free mind file. It's more focused and visualized here. Now, in the brain, you do have the option of seeing the bigger picture. So that's the next step that sometimes people come to when they look at the brain in comparison to other mind mapping uh, projects is in mind mapping project, you can see, or in the uh, my particular mind map, which was free mind, you could see everything all at once. You can do that here in the brain as well. We're currently in the default view. So the default view is what we call normal view in the brain. You're seeing the current active thought and one generation away from the active thought. But let's uh, click down, let's say we're reviewing the, the people that we work with here in the brain. I'm gonna minimize my tool tabs down below. So I'll just click and minimize that. So I have the notes and all the tool tabs out of the way. I'm focused just right here on the people. And I'll go up to switch my view of the brain. So now I'm gonna go into what we call, now I can do an outline view. I'll show you that really quickly. Again, it's a bit linear but it allows me to get a bigger picture of my information. So I can click to expand my people. I'll click to expand Lore Bloom as well. And take a look at the pricing. So now I'm looking at individuals, uh, customers, product pricing. I'll open up my resources. You can see how the bigger the screen you have, the better real estate um, uh, you're going to have to be able to visualize this information. But once again, I've taken basically that entire mind map, that entire structure, and I'm visually visualizing everything at once. Also, when I hover over a thought, I'll either have a little plus sign to expand it. So history, I get a plus sign, meaning I can expand that. Or if I hover it over again, get a little minus sign. That's the collapse button. So I'm not deleting anything by clicking on the minus sign. I'm simply collapsing that from the view. So this is called, um, this is called our outline view, and up here in view, I can also go into a new expanded view. An expanded view is a lot of fun because I get to decide specifically where I want each thought to go. Notice I'm, I'm going to click on catalog. Below catalog, we call that the anchor. It's a sort of a clear button, and as soon as I click and move it, notice it turns solid underneath catalog. That's telling me it's anchored. So if I move a connected thought, it doesn't move catalog, catalog is anchored in place. If I undo the anchor, then it's gonna follow its closely, most closely related thought. So I can really decide where I want my content to go, and again, from time to time, expand, and start seeing those cross relationships in my brain. So you can really, once again, depending on the screen real estate you have, get the big picture of a particular project that you're working on. Now, I'm gonna to move forward with some more imports. 
Uh, we've got many different import types to share. I won't be able to share them all today, but I want to show you a variety. I'm going to go back to my normal view. And also under uh, Laura Bloom Furniture, I'm going to make an area for my research. Oops. I just clicked and dragged marketing down. Let me move that back. There we go. There we go. Research. So for my research, I'll bring my tool tabs back down below. For my research, I'm actually going to import a, in this case, a an outline, or uh, I think I have actually an Excel spreadsheet, yes. So here I'm researching sort of the pros and cons of different types of hardwood, softwoods, poplar, walnut, cherry, et cetera, it's all gonna be very, very beneficial for my furniture company, my passion project. And so I'm simply going to drag to select this content. Now let's take a look at how this content is formatted. You can um, import different types of outlines into the brain, whether they're coming from Microsoft Word or any type of tab delineated list. Um, if you can uh, convert your content, whatever content you have, maybe you've got a CVS file, maybe you've got uh, some type of uh, SQL database, but if you can convert that to a tab delineated structure, as you see here, so you can see wood spe species qualifications. The next step down is hardwoods, then we go down into oak, and then white oak and red oak. So let's look at those here in my outline and take a look at what they look like when I paste them into my brain. So I'll paste that outline and uh, okay. So I already had one of those thoughts in my brain from a uh, from the, the other import. But there you can see, there's my hardwoods. I go into oak, I've got red and white, and under white, all of the different categories, cortisone, straight cut, fumes well, et cetera. All of the different uh, pieces of content from that outline have now been imported here into the brain uh, by importing the uh, uh, right-clicking and selecting to paste the outline. So the outline process, a little bit different than clicking on uh, in my brain, clicking on file import. So from file import, I do have the options to import um, a Word document. So there's the Word outline, but when you're doing Excel, you actually copy the Excel and paste it here uh, into the brain just simply by right clicking. And one more import that I'd like to share with you, just because it's another great example, and this one is particularly common, that's simply importing a folder. Um, a lot of times when people discover the brain, um, obviously they've been keeping their information in the file and folder structure. For we all have, we're all familiar with that we used it for years until mind mapping came along. So obviously you might have some content in an existing folder, you can zip that up or you can just leave the, uh, the file as a, as a folder. I'm going to jump over into marketing and uh, under marketing, I've got my, uh, let's call it um, uh, product 21. So just making up a product name, this is gonna be all my marketing for product 21, which currently exists in a, a folder. So I'll open up the folder first, and if I can find it, let's see if I go into my C drive and into eSolutions, and there's my marketing, add 21, so I've got some documents there, the product launch, uh, a couple of different graphics, some subfolders as well, so there's a lot of content in here, but I also want to cross-reference this. There's a lot of content in this marketing folder that references presentations for other clients or other jobs that I'm working on. And I can visualize those links in the brain, but I can't do that here. When I dive down into marketing and there's my launch party PDF file, I don't know who wrote that file, that PDF. I don't know where that launch party is taking place. Once I get this in the brain, I can link that up to the location, the people that are involved, the setup committee, et cetera. So let's go ahead and do that import. So from the brain, I'm on my product 21 thought. Once again, I'll file and select to import and import a folder. So I simply navigate out into my C drive and into eSolutions. 
And you can select a very high level folder and map that out in the brain if you want. I'm drilling down into marketing. So yeah, that was it. Let's come back up one. So let's just get that whole marketing folder. And a few things to talk about when you're uh, importing a folder. Number one, all the individual folders themselves are going to become thoughts. So subfolders down below, those are thoughts. Any of the file attachments are added as an attachment, or any of the files in the folder, I should say, are added as attachments. So we'll say okay, and here is the result. So earlier we talked, to, uh, we looked at that folder, add 21, and there is, uh, there are the three different file attachments. Now, if I want those to be their own thought in the brain, I can simply uh, click and drag them right up into the structure of the brain. So I've grabbed an attachment. It was my design requirements. Drag and drop that here into the brain. It becomes its own thought. So that's where the file attachment is now. And I'll link that over to uh, my friend Pat that we talked about earlier. So he's working also uh, not only on my side projects, working on that part shortage, but he's also going to be working for me with this uh, design requirements for add 21 that I've imported in as well. Now you notice also I had that folder, I jump back and forth between Mac and PC. So sometimes my folders get these little Apple double files in them. There's nothing there, it's a folder that Windows creates uh, as a result of that directory being opened in a Mac as well. So no problem, I'll just right click and forget that one little folder. So didn't need it, so it's gone. So a few different great examples of how you can import content into your brain so you don't necessarily have to start thought by thought one at a time building your brain you can take your existing content and as you've seen in many ways import that into the brain and the results let me go down to the reports and refresh you know i started this particular brain about 10 or 15 minutes ago with uh no content it started from scratch we already have 212 thoughts in this particular brain. So it's on its way to, in the future, becoming a mega brain. And the final component that I wanted to share with you today, since uh, Shelly started with talking about Jerry's brain, which is available online, let's go full circle. Let's put this brain online as well. I'm gonna take the brain that I've created today and sync this to the cloud. So you can see it's never been synced. I'm gonna sync this up to webbrain.com. And everything is being synced to webbrain, except for shortcuts. If I have a shortcut to a file, which I don't yet, because I haven't created any, but uh, shortcuts, you're only preserving the path when you sync this brain to the cloud. Um, if you feel that syncing your brain to the cloud is necessary for you, there are many benefits. I can access my brain from my iPhone, from my Android device, I can sync my brain between computers. I've upgraded my account to Team Brain, so I can even share my brain with Shelly. So Shelly can also be an editor of my business brain, and together we can collaborate and edit and modify these documents and keep them in sync through webbrain.com. So while that's syncing, I'll open up in a, another browser window. I'll just simply log in to my account at webbrain.com. And we'll see that this brain is available not only through a web interface, and I can continue on making modifications right here from the web interface. Um, so I'll go into my account page. We'll see if my brain is there yet. Sometimes it might, uh, it might get a little uploading uh, message. So it's not there quite yet. Um, so once it is available, it'll be showing up here in my list. Until then, I'll open another sample brain that I have. But as you can see, I can click through this particular brain and continue on adding information from the web interface, adding new thoughts. You can see there's an edit button down below so I can add new content uh, into the notes or file attachments, as well as access my, uh, my brains from my iPhone and mobile devices. So a lot of great advantages to getting your brains online. That's how you can visit Jerry brain again we'll be sending every attendee today a link to jerry's brain actually he does have a nice little shortcut that's easy to remember it's www.jerrysbrain.com so you can get to his brain and see it online very quickly and the way he did this 
was to first sync his brain to the cloud. Each brain that you sync will have its own settings page. So you go into the settings for your brain and decide if you want to move your brain from being a private brain to a public brain, or you could leave it unlisted and save those changes down below and just email the URL to interested friends, colleagues, etc. So I leave this particular brain as unlisted. You can see Brigitte and Shelly do have editor access to this brain. And once I save that, that means this is publicly accessible, but the only way you can find the URL is if I share it with someone. So it's not getting into, because I left it as unlisted, it's not being indexed by Google or, or uh, anything like that. So I can right click, go into share, and here's a nice, simple little URL that uh, I can copy and paste into an email to a friend or send this out in a tweet. And anyone with access to that URL can find my brain and start browsing through it in read-only mode, because I haven't made them an editor, um, in read-only mode online. So that's how we share the brain online for, uh, for others to view. And with that, I think we covered a lot of information today, Shelly. We did. Um, do we have any questions or any We do. We have a lot of uh, different questions. And uh, someone Great. just asked earlier on about the different views. How do, how do you get to the views? So if you could just review where you went to all the views, that would be great. Absolutely. So here I am back in my new business brain. And there's two different ways. Uh, there's a few different ways to get to views. But the most common, first off, there's a button right here in the menu up above. So, and when you hover over it, it says switch view. So we can easily jump into outline view or new expanded view, or even the brain remembers the last expanded view that you have open. So I can click on last expanded and go right back to where I was with that expanded view that I created earlier. Um, so that's what the easiest way. You can see there's some keyboard shortcuts as well. Those can be customized as well as little view button there. So I can click on view and select which view option I want to choose from. The expanded views, let me point this out, and this is for those that have purchased the Brain Pro, a, a license or a pro combo, um, you'll actually be able to save views that you create. So you can set up this with, and that's a great feature for a mega brain because I can set up my uh, client research view and set up my product research view and set up my sales performance view. So a very large brain, that's everything to do about my business. And I set up a few custom views that I like to pop in and out of uh, from time to time, depending on what meeting I'm in or, or what the current topic of conversation may be. All right, great. And then um, a lot of questions on importing uh, is and, um, and kind of editing your brain. One question from Edward, is it possible to link all attachments and make them internal with one command? Yes, it certainly is. So if you find that you have been using the brain for a while now, getting comfortable with it, you didn't want to commit, so you created shortcuts to all the thoughts that you're accessing. And then you decide, hey, this is great. I can use my brain online and for my mobile devices, but all of those shortcuts, and I have so many, there's a couple of different tricks to share with you. First, you can review your shortcuts. So let's go down to reports. And I wanna see all thoughts with attachments, you can see that are either internal or external. So all external attachments, I don't think I have any in this brain yet. Oh, I do have one. So I click on maps and there you go. I've got a shortcut there on that particular uh, thought. So I can review that shortcut in my, in my list or I can go up to file and down into utilities. We've got a great little utility here, which is move external attachments into brain. So I would recommend step one, review your external attachments first make sure you're comfortable and, and you really wanna move all of those files internally into your brain. And if you do, rather than manually one by one, you know, I can right click and select to you know, move file into brain, move file out of brain. Rather than doing that manually, just run that report. File, down to utilities, and then move external attachments into brain. So I'll take all those shortcuts and move them internally into your brain. One more sync, and now I've got online access. 
All right, great. And a question from Donna. How can I copy thoughts from one brain to another? And that's where we can cover copying. And also, maybe people want have a bunch of brains and they want to import them together. So copying sure. from one brain to the other and importing brains. Sure, sure. So um, let's go ahead and just take the current thought that I'm on. Let's say from this uh, marketing of product 21. Let's say I've got another brain uh, that I am putting together. And I from that brain, need to reference everything that I did with my uh, Product 21 marketing. So I'm just going to right-click on marketing. Well, Product 21 is a more unique name. So I'll right-click on Product 21 and select to copy local thought URL. So I click on copy local thought URL, jump into my other brain, and... Let's say this is sort of a network map, but I'm looking at an application, CRM apps, uh, ACT, and I want a little uh, jump thought from here to everything that I'm doing with ACT. Maybe there's some uh, references to uh, different customers that promote different products, et cetera, and I'm constantly reminding them, well, here's what we did with this product, so you should know about uh, that as well. So sort of a vague reference, but once again, from ACT in this brain, I need to get over to product 21 in a different brain. I copy that URL shortcut, so I right click and select to paste thought URL. Sort of an obscure link, so I wanna bring it over here over as a jump thought. Now what's gonna happen when I click on this jump thought? It's going to close my current brain, it's going to open my uh, my Matt Caton brain and take me directly to the marketing or the product 21 thought. So that was done again just by right clicking and selecting to copy local thought URL. So you're linking uh, to a specific thought in another brain. And the other option is to actually import. Let's say everything about this brain is fantastic. I want to import it into another brain, or I want to import another brain into this one. That is an easy process as well. I would click on File and select to Merge Brain. So now I navigate over to find the brain I want to merge with. I'm trying to find a small brain, so it's uh, I'll grab my ideas. I'm not sure what's in my ideas, but uh, what it's going to do is it's going to first go out to my ideas, copy everything, Thing. It just did that. And then it's going to paste into uh, this particular brain. It did that very quickly. You may not have seen everything that happened. It went over, opened up my ideas, copied everything, came back to the Matt Caton brain and pasted all that content in. All the content. So the files, the links, the link types, uh, thought tags, icons, etc. So this was the My Ideas brain and it's now linked here under product 21. So, and my starting thought for the My Ideas Brain was actually brainstorming with the brain. So, that is what is linked with Product 21. A couple of different examples to play around with, but uh, merging brains, definitely an option for you. All right, and uh, another question from Kristen, and uh, we're just, just to let you know, we the webinar is recording. We're just going to go a couple more minutes into overtime and end this in about five more minutes, but because there's so many great questions and comments, we're going to stay for a couple more uh, minutes to answer them. So, Matt, a uh, question from Kristen, adding photos, addresses, phone numbers to clients. Absolutely. So I do that quite a bit. Um, uh, I use my brain as a CRM. So I typically do that down in the notes. So if I have a client, um, customer service, there's my clients, new client acquisition. And here is Laura Miller. So I typically like to copy and paste into the notes. Uh, that way it's really easy for me to find on my iPhone from other devices. It's right there in front of me. Um, uh, as far as a picture, if you have a picture of Laura Miller, you can actually copy that. It's like I want to be able to remember what Laura Miller looks like. Next time I see her, I can go into, let's see, I should have some pictures here on my C drive. Let's say she's a graphic artist. I've got some wallpaper 
And here's some of the arts that, uh, that she does. I'm gonna right click and copy that image and right click and paste. Uh, paste thought icon. So now when I hover over, it actually expands that image. Um, so you can do that with people, you can do that with products, uh, you can do that with how to guides. I see a lot of sample brains that people share with me from time to time. And quite often the instructions say, you know, take chord Z and insert into slot W. And it's really a lot better just to see that in a diagram. Um, so they have how-to pictures in uh, as thought added as icons, attachment for thoughts, and it makes it a nice visual display. So images, people. Um, I do have a lot of people images in my uh, my work brain and my personal brain, but most importantly, I keep all of their contact information in the notes so of course i would just say uh put laura's email here l at uh, miller.com and of course the phone number and their twitter feed their facebook page whatever other information meeting notes checklists again all goes right down there into the notes and when i'm on a phone conference with a particular client or uh, with a, a brain user or even a colleague, I'll have their thought open in my brain. So if they mention a really great idea or if they assign me a project, I can keep track of that information right there in my notes. So my brain is always open even when I'm on the phone, meetings, conferences, and everything goes right into the notes. And that, of course, includes people and contact information. All right, great. And then a couple more questions. One is from Khalil. It's about link types. Great feature, but how do I deal with time? Example, I want to sort all people who graduated from X university in 1990. It would not be practical to create dozens of link types for all of them. What would be your best recommendation? Um, so I guess with that, you could probably, Khalil, get into tagging. Um, in addition to link types, um, that would probably be a way the the way to ascribe multiple attributes. And then um, you know you can always do some more advanced uh, querying with uh, reports also uh, in terms of you know dates created if, if that's what you want. But I think in this case you're talking about tagging. So Matt, I'll let you sort of address that sort of structural um, organization question from Khalil. Sure. Well, I think uh, I think you're spot on with tags. That's a great example of when I would use a tag. Um, you can assign multiple tags to a thought. So I'll click on Jill, and let's say Jill graduated from. Um, let's go down to my tags. You can see I've got some existing tags from importing that uh, business brain earlier. But let's say I want to keep track of all of my um, uh, UCLA grads and all of my Florida grads, et cetera, whatever the case may be. So I'll just add a new tag, and let's say Jill's graduated from UCLA, and she also graduated in the 90s. So I've got a thought for 90s. Sarah graduated from UCLA. Oops, I'll link to the existing UCLA. So that should have UCLA. Link Sarah that up that way. So uh, Sarah linked to UCLA. She graduated in the 80s. So a couple of different thought tags, and you can click on the actual tag. You want to find all your uh, grads in the 90s. I click on 90s. So far, there's only one, but all of my UCLA grads, there's two. There's Jill and Sarah. So that's a great way of maybe keeping track for that particular example. I think Shelly and I both had the same idea um, as far as how we would want to track that. The link is more the relationship between two thoughts. Um, so Jill is linked up to new client acquisitions. Uh, maybe she's, um, uh, maybe she's, uh, you know, we've got a scale rating of whether we think they're going to sign on for this next year's contract or not. 
and maybe she's code blue, so I could click on that link between the two thoughts or right click on it and I'll edit the link. Code blue. So I can see that uh, Jill is a code blue, whereas Gail doesn't seem like she's going to sign on. I'll edit the link. She's code red. And let's click on that link. Notice that when I click on the link, I'll click away for a second. I've got the thought tool tab showing down below. But when I click on a link, the thought tool tab becomes a link tool tab. You can apply notes to links. You can add attachments to links when they're selected. Uh, in this case, I'm actually gonna change the color. So code red is gonna appear as red. So you can actually define the relationship between two thoughts. Yes, these are all my possible new client acquisitions. Some are a little bit more of a sure thing than others. So we've got code blue, code red, and you can even set these up as thought types so you can reapply them over and over again really quickly in the future. So that's just another feature that you can utilize to uh, define and bring more context to your information. All right, and then we had a question from Elias. Is Ray Kurzweil's brain available public? And cool question, Ray Kurzweil, and for those of you who don't know who Ray Kurzweil is, he's a futurist. Um, and he actually created, almost a decade ago, he was a very early a doctor of the brain, a brain that was his alternate personality. And I'm actually glad you brought that up because that is an example of digital identity. I don't know that that brain is public anymore, to be honest. Uh, I'd have to search. Um, we do have some other high profile brains. Um, actually, Jerry Mikulski references Kurzweil and his brains. Um, David Allen, um, the founder of Getting Things Done, and that's um, ad, on our Big Thinkers page. And I'd have to do a search to see if Ray Kurzweil is available. But um, there are some very interesting brains floating out there. So maybe we'll send some links in our thank you notes. And Matt, I don't know if you've heard any more about that brain of recently. Uh, James Bur Burke, the author of um, connections. Um, he's the uh, co-host of the popular uh, PBS series and, and prolific author. He also has a brain called the Knowledge Web, and we have a webinar on that. So we've got some really cool um, evocative examples, just again, to get your creative juices going. As far as Ray Kurzweil, he is a brain user. He did have a public brain called Ramona, his alter ego, but unfortunately, I don't think that is published anymore, but that did exist. And uh, we have another question. Uh, what is the difference between a folder and drag and drop? So if you can, and, and what the difference is between importing a folder and dragging uh. and dropping? Yes, I prefer importing just because I want my content in the brain so that when I sync to the cloud, all of those internal attachments are there. Um, if I just link to a folder and then sync to the brain uh, or sync the brain to the brain cloud, when I access my brain from my iPhone, when I sync that, uh, that brain to another device, uh, such as my, my MacBook at home or, um, or my traveling laptop, I won't have access. That'll be, I'll have basically a link to, and you can see I can drag and drop a folder right into the brain. Um, so here's a folder on my desktop. I'll drag and drop that. And great, I've got a link back over to this documents folder here on my desktop. What happens when I sync this to the cloud and access it from another machine? That other machine is gonna say, all right, open the documents folder located at C users Mac Hayden desktop it's probably not gonna be there. It certainly isn't there from the cloud server. Uh, so it probably won't be there from my other de devices. Um, you can also turn on a visualization so I can visualize this folder. We call those virtual thoughts. And you do that in, uh, if you go up to your options, preferences, and under your UI setting, you can actually turn on show virtual thoughts. So I click on that and you can see now documents actually gets mapped out and I go and start seeing all the different subdirectories uh, that I have inside that documents directory. Uh, um, that really doesn't work so well for me, again, because I like my information internally in the brain so they can access it from other locations. But again, the choice is yours. Just like whether you decide you want to create a jump thought versus a child thought or a thought tag versus a native thought in the brain that thoughts are connected to. Those are your choices 
and it's really up to how you use the application and how you visualize your information. And I think with that, we are in massive overtime. It's 1224 uh, so in, in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, I'm, we're going to close today's session. There are a lot of questions, so I apologize for those of you that we didn't get to answer all your questions. But as you can see, we've, read, we've gone fairly late. I think we covered a lot of good ground. I do want to let you know, Matt is hosting The Brain 101 tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific time, much smaller class size. So, you know, all your questions, you can even pop in for the end of the Q&A. Um, we can also just email support or reply to the GoToMeeting address and we'll answer any questions. We have free support to all users. But I think we're going to wrap things up. But Matt, before we do, any final words of wisdom or anything that you, you saw that you kind of want to perhaps cover? Sure. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. This is a particularly fun webinar because uh, we get to talk about you know, the evolution of the brain, how when you're using the brain, it does grow and evolve into this uh, massive reflection of your own thoughts and yet still easily accessible, easy to go through the uh, reports, do searches, and find that, that content that you're looking for. But if you are just getting started, on the flip side of, of this, if you're just getting started with the brain, do join me for tomorrow's Brain 101. It's really just the basics, creating new thoughts, adding attachments, uh, uh, basic functionality of the application. So that's the 101 tomorrow or every Friday. You can sign up on our website. All right, and I think with that, we are going to end uh, today's webinar. Thanks to everyone for all you, the great questions and for participating. And uh, we wish you well in creating your one brain to rule them all and hope to see you again in uh, two weeks. We do a brain uh, webinar on uh, using the brain for presentations and meeting management. That's also very interesting. So do sign up for that. And again, tomorrow's 101 class. Um, Matt can go more into all kinds of importing and again, much more uh, smaller class size so we can certainly demo your questions. Any question that we haven't answered, feel free to write into support or chat with us live on our website between uh, 8 a.m. Pacific to 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. We're uh, happy to help you that. And with that, we'll look forward to seeing you again on a future uh, Brain Technologies webinar. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Bye.